So back in 2020, during the pandemic, I had a lot of free time on my hands. I had always wanted to create a profitable side hustle, and after dozens of attempts, I finally had my first bit of success. So if you're in the technology space at all, and more specifically, if you're in the uh, mechanical keyboard community, you've definitely seen these guys before. Um, and essentially what these are, are coiled keyboard cables and you'll probably see them in all kinds of desk setup type videos. Um, they've become like a staple on mechanical keyboard desks. Uh, I was among the first to start making them and selling them on Etsy back in 2020, and this became a decent source of income for me. And at the time I was making about $2,000 a month in profit uh, from this endeavor. It was really nice to just have this side hustle. But in this video, I wanna talk more about what happened after my first year or so of running this business on Etsy. And in particular, I wanna talk about three things. The first is just gonna be a background on this business in general. The second is going to be the technologies that went into building the new website once I migrated off of Etsy. And third is gonna be whether um, or not I thought this was the right decision, um, kind of looking back on things, uh, and if I would do anything differently. So definitely stick around until the end of the video to see if I made it the right decision or not. So as I said, in the early days, uh, the entirety of this business was run on Etsy, and I had gotten a handful of sales on eBay as well. This worked really well in the beginning because there was only a handful of other sellers that were selling these cables on Etsy. Uh, and I spent a lot of time trying to create like the perfect listings with really nice product photography, um, trying to get all kinds of positive reviews. Uh, and like I said, this worked out really well in the beginning. I was getting almost more orders than I could fulfill uh, because I was working full time and it's also pretty intensive to create these cables. It would take about one to two hours to just create one single cable. And as time went on, the information needed to create these cables became more and more accessible and way more sellers started to pop onto Etsy. I had taken about a three to four month break in 2021 as I was doing a cross country road trip. And by the time that I came back to my business and turned it back on on Etsy, I had way more competition than I did before and I was barely getting even one sale a week. At this point, my business was pretty much dead and I knew if I didn't do something about it, then I would never be able to stand out in this market again. So early in 2022, I started to work on what I believe to be the solution to this problem. A huge pain point when purchasing a cable on Etsy is the customization piece of it. Buyers would have to type in their customization info into these text boxes, um, and essentially the seller would have like a picture of all the color options, and then have to type in the correct color that corresponded uh, to whatever color they wanted. So. This created a really poor user experience, and it also caused a lot of questions from my buyers that I didn't really even have time to deal with. So with all this in mind, I set out to build a solution that would make customizing and buying a cable quick and seamless and really easy for the buyer. This is handcraftedcables.com, a site for buying customizable coiled cables by using a 3D model representation of what your final cable will look like. This was heavily inspired by the Nike Shoe Builder and it offers a comparable user experience where you can pick out the colors of the various pieces of your cable and see what it'll look like in real time. Once you've gone through all the customization options, you are directed to a checkout page where you can make a purchase using a custom Stripe integration. Since this is a software development channel, I definitely plan to make uh, separate videos on each of the technologies used uh, to make this website, um, but for now, in the purpose of just this video, I will go over the technologies at a high level. So for the actual 3D model, I built this in a software called Blender. Each customizable piece of the cable is its own 3D mesh, which is important because uh, this allows the user to change colors of the cable individually from each other. Embedding the model into the site was made possible with a node package called React 3 Fiber. This is built on top of 3.js, which is a JavaScript library for displaying 3D graphics in the browser. And essentially, React 3 Fiber allows you to turn your 3D models into React components that behave just like a normal React component would. As mentioned previously, the checkout is powered by Stripe. This was pretty simple. Uh, I just created a Node.js server uh, to interact with the Stripe API, and this allows uh, cables to be purchased from the site. 
And finally, I deployed the application on Heroku and was able to handle the continuous delivery of the application through uh, their GitHub integration. So when I initially had this idea, I wanted to get it up and running as quickly as possible uh, to test out my theory. So my first thought was, was there a way that I could somehow get the customizable 3D uh, model onto a Shopify website? However, after searching through their app store at the time, I couldn't find anything that suited my needs. And instead of learning how to create my own Shopify plugin, I decided it would be better to just build this whole uh, solution from scratch. Uh, I haven't looked to see recently if there is a Shopify plugin that allows you to do this, but if there isn't, I think it's a pretty good business opportunity. So you might want to just check that uh, if you're interested in building something like this. Alrighty, so now for the most interesting part of this video for sure is how much money have I made from handcraftedcables.com? And the answer is a whopping zero dollars. Yep, that's right. I haven't made a single sale uh, on handcrafted cables. And this is for a number of reasons. And let me get into those now. I would say the biggest reason is or was my marketing strategy when you're selling on a platform like etsy you don't really have to think about where your traffic is coming from uh, and in that sense you don't even have to come up with a marketing strategy to be honest i don't really think that my strategy was that bad i think it was like a solid strategy i just didn't really follow through on a lot of it um, as much as i should have if I had been more consistent with my strategies, I think we definitely would have seen some sales at some point. But let me break it down for you. Here are the three components that went into my marketing strategy. The first is really simple. I just had an Instagram account um, and I would follow um, people who interacted with similar type of content, um, like mechanical keyboard type of Instagram accounts or just technology accounts. And I would also post pretty consistently just pictures of uh, my, my various types of cables. I got a decent amount of followers from doing this, um, but at the end of the day, I was not consistent in posting content and following people and unfollowing people. Um, I don't know, it was just a lot of work and I didn't wanna see it through, and so I didn't. The second part of my strategy was running paid ads, and this is a two-part strategy. So the first part was running Google ads. Um, I wanted to take advantage of search traffic and Google also gives you a $500 coupon if you spend enough money. So I wanted to give this a shot because I think it would be uh, a good way to capture people who were searching for custom coiled cables. Honestly, I got a lot of traffic from this method and I think my click-through rates were pretty good and people were coming to the site and using and interacting with it. But one thing that happened was I had my Stripe integration turned off for about half of this test. And so people were getting to the checkout page. They were getting to the, the actual where you could buy the cable, but the Stripe integration wasn't turned on. So even if they wanted to buy it, uh, they weren't able to. So I think definitely missed out on some sales. And after that, I was kind of demoralized. So I stopped running this entirely. I was gonna run Facebook ads as a retargeting strategy. I had a Facebook pixel that was set up on the website. So anybody that came to the coil builder or came to the checkout page, I would be able to retarget them with Facebook ads. But once again, I kind of just didn't follow through and I didn't even get these running at any point. The third part of my strategy was to reach out to mechanical keyboard and technology content influencers and trying to get them to promote my site and my products. Um, honestly, I think this would have worked really well um, as I had seen other brands that were doing something pretty similar. Once again, I just didn't really follow through here and I didn't reach out to any influencers. I think honestly, this would have worked really well I was in this weird mindset here where I really did think that this one would work and I didn't have a ton of time and I was like scared that I was gonna get too many orders and I wouldn't be able to fulfill them. Um, but now that I'm saying that out loud, it honestly just sounds like a huge excuse. So I wish I had tried it out just once just to see if we could get any results that way. But that was the third part of my marketing strategy. One other thing to note is that while the cable customization piece of the website is really cool and I'm really happy with how that turned out, the rest of the site is pretty bland. I'm not good at designing UIs and I think that really shows on this website. So I think for some people it probably created just, maybe they weren't confident enough in the website to actually purchase from it. So if I were to make another site like this again, I would definitely invest more in myself and my UI design. Um, 
to try and get a better looking website overall. So even though I didn't make any sales and this business has completely ceased to exist, I should also mention that the site is still up. I'll leave a link for it in the description, but I'm gonna turn the, the Stripe integration off so you won't be able to purchase because I'm not actively making these anymore. Um, all that being said, I still think this was a success. I was able to take action on a really cool idea that I had. And at the end of the day, I built something that I'm really proud of. The dream of building a successful startup is definitely not dead. I have got some more ideas in the pipeline. So I'm really looking forward to sharing all of those with you as well. Um, so thanks a ton for watching all the way until the end. Definitely subscribe if you want to see some more software development type videos like this, whether it's building an application from the ground up or maybe those deep dive videos where we're talking more about the technologies that I use to build the websites. But yeah, thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.